Okay, today we use pure data for something really useful. We program a random melody generator that can run for all eternity. Let's go! Okay, now let's erase everything and I show you how to rebuild it step by step. We don't need the objects down there and not the objects up here. We just keep the number boxes because with those we can send number values that we divide by 4 and then they go into the oscillator. Now we create a metronome and the metronome drives a random number generator that generates numbers from 0 to 3. They are routed through this object and the zeros go through the left outlet, the ones here, the twos there and everything else so the threes go out of the right outlet. Now we create another random number generator and those numbers generated by this one we multiply by 200 and they will actually determine the speed of our metronome and this makes sure that we create notes of different length. So when we turn it on you can hear that the notes play differently long and because we always want to have two notes playing at a time we create another oscillator down here and we take the numbers that we use for the first oscillator to create those notes but we do a little trick with it because we multiply the numbers with the output of the random number generator up there. Okay, now we have our base unit done. So let's take the whole package and we make a copy of it so we can generate another melody generator and in this one we don't want to generate bass sounds so we replace the divide by 4 with another object and this line object is used to slide from one number value to another. In our case this will make it possible to slide from one tonal value to another smoothly and we can determine the time in which this happens by um, putting input into the middle inlet of the line object and for this we use the output of our random number generator. It still goes into the metronome but first it goes into the line object and now we connect everything to the digital to analog converter which is your sound card and now when we turn the whole thing off and on again you will hear that now we have a melody of sliding tonal values, which is two octaves higher. Well, but we want more. So we create another melody generator that we put on the right side over here and connect everything accordingly like we did on the left side. Also this object down here. And then we connect everything to the digital to analog converter again. And now when we turn it off and on again, you hear that we now have two melodies playing at a higher pitch at the same time. However, we would like to make the right melody generator a bit more fun. And one thing that we will do is to generate a function that allows us to change the volume of it dynamically. You might have noticed that right now all the tones are playing at the same volume. And for the right one, we will write this little dialogue that I'm creating over here. We need a metronome again and also a line object and some other object as well. The purpose will become clear quite shortly. So now when we have this we stretch it all a bit. This comes here and this moves a bit up and then we move everything a bit up here. And we also again need a random number generator that generates numbers between 0 and 2999 and it will again be used to provide values for the metronome and also for the line object again. The floating point number container and the plus one object together with the objects that I'm creating right now have the task to provide 0 and 1 values to the line object whenever the metronome triggers the floating point number container. Now have to connect everything right. This goes here and this one connects up there and that one is to reset it. Alright, so let's connect everything together again. This one goes there, that one goes there. 
Okay, so how do we control the volume of the right melody generator with this now? Actually it's quite easy. We just create one of those audio multiplicator boxes and you might have noticed that all the other ones are connected directly to the toggle switch on the top. That will be different for this one. We connect it instead to what we have created on the right side and then we connect it also to the digital to analog converter and we erase the connections that we have above that. And now when we turn off and on again, you will notice that one of the higher pitched melodies is changing in volume. The next thing we will do is make the audio signal of the right melody generator pop out a bit more. For that we will make it clip. So we are creating this clip object and as the signal is created from sine waves, clipping the sine wave will turn it more into something like a square wave. We have to connect this object in between those other two and we actually have to add a tilde so that it works. So we put this here, erase this connection and then put it in between. And now you notice that it's far easier to distinguish between the two melodies. So what we could do now is structure it a bit to make it a bit more comprehensible. We move this down a little bit and add a number box here. And this gets the output of the second baseline generator. And also on the left we have two tones created at the same time. So we get an output box for that. And the same for the left melody generator. Ah, this one does not connect. I need the output of this one. Yeah, now it's right. Okay, so clean this up a little bit. Move this a little bit to the left. And I would say that looks good. Yeah! As you can see, finally your search for a way to generate random music for all eternity has come to an end. And of course, that is just one of the gazillion possibilities that you have with this patch. Let me just list all of them. Number one, for example, you could... If you like what you've just seen, please also watch my other videos where I describe how I currently develop new musical instruments. Or subscribe to my channel. If you're quick, you have the chance to become subscriber number 10. Thank you for watching.